Welcome to part five, where we restore a 1984 VHS videotape vending machine back to perfect working order, like some kind of Victorian child haunting a Best Buy. Or like when the universe whispered, no one asked for this, and I screamed, I did! And also because therapy is expensive and this was somehow cheaper. In our last thrilling installment, we ordered replacement parts for the printer, and guess what? They finally arrived! On the left, you've got the busted, shameful garbage parts, and on the right, the new hotness! Look at it, it's gorgeous. It's like the prom king of industrial kiosk printers. And fun fact, I did not know that generic printers for large industrial equipment was a thing that existed, but now I do, and unfortunately, so do you. We kick things off by playing everybody's favorite adult party game, which nut driver do I need? It's a nightmare scavenger hunt, but with tools of agony. Our task is to swap these weird little PCB legs that bolt the printer board to the communication board, which then bolt onto the video vendor itself. Sounds really simple, right? And it is suspiciously simple. And in hindsight, I wish I had savored that brief shining moment of competence because what happened next is what I can only describe as Murphy's Law. If Murphy woke up that morning and chose violence, uh, I'm about to get absolutely clobbered by the laws of physics, engineering, and irony all at once. After a wildly successful PCB leg transplant, cue the dramatic music. We move on to the next thrilling chapter in our printer saga, the Hecon Printer Mechanism. That's its real name. It sounds less like a printer and more like a rejected villain from Transformers, but here we are. Now this complete mechanism comes with a bonus dot matrix printer head because apparently in 1984 they believed in bundling misery with hardware. You might remember because I certainly do that I already bought a spare print head like a fool before discovering this little beauty existed. Let's take one last sentimental look at our now unemployed print head who will be going into cold storage like a Disney executive. And now we move outside where the real printer surgery is about to begin because nothing says professional electronic repair like bringing your delicate 1980s tech into the harsh judgmental light of Day. Sneak preview, that's not the first time I'm gonna drop a screw, so I think we're gonna switch things up and we're gonna we're gonna tell some printer jokes. Okay, here we go, here we go. Why did the boss enroll the office printing machine in an exercise class? He wanted it to get toner. Okay, okay. What does my printer have in common with a rock star? They both keep jamming all the time. Yeah. What did Cinderella say when her office printer malfunctioned? Don't worry, I know someday my prints will come. <laughs> Let's get our clean on. Okay, there's plenty more where that came from. Why did the pig farmer finally decide to auction off his printer? The high cost of the oink proved too much for him. <laughs> Hey, what happened to the printer supply salesman who dreamed about finding a brand new color of ink to sell? Uh. He woke up and realized it was all a pigment of his imagination. <laughs> okay, take two. Take three. Probably just the third and last time I'm gonna drop a screw, right? I'm pretty sure. Oh my god! Okay, okay, well, that's probably the fourth and last time I'm gonna drop a screw because how could it happen again? Uh. Uh. Oh my gosh. You know, fixing a printer is like arguing with a ghost. You're yelling, you're sweating, nothing's happening, and then somehow you're the one who ends up apologizing. I'm sorry, Epson. I, I didn't mean to question your truth. You know, others would say fixing a printer is not a repair, it's a hostage situation. I'm standing there like, just print the page, you coward! And the printer's like, hmm, no paper, while holding the paper in its little plastic hands. And if you're asking yourself, why am I suddenly so melancholy, it's because, yes, I have run out of printer jokes. Finally, after fighting with gravity and loose screws, I win. And everything is attached. We're going to now plug in these lower plugs down here. I'm reaching into the coin door to plug these guys in. And we've got that going. Now we're going to take the ink out. This is the first time I've had proper ink. Okay, let's fire up the machine. The starting to get warm. Oh, oh, it, I hear, it, uh, it's not printing though. Let's, uh, let's put the line feed in. This was the test print, by the way. So it definitely printed. I may have put this in backwards. And yes, it was definitely backwards. We're gonna reverse it, put it in front of the print head like it's supposed to be, and here we go. We're gonna we're gonna do it. Take two, here it goes. Let's get our line feed on, get in there, come on, get in there, and go, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so close. 
type in the secret password, get into the maintenance menu, and let's see, print CC. What is this going to do? Okay. Let's take a closer look. I think we could... It's definitely print... Wait a minute. Hold on. It's kind of squished. Can you see that? Let's take a closer look here. You know what? I think there's a configuration i got to fix. Uh, if I recall... There were jumpers on the old PCB, and so here they are. There's two in the middle, but on our PCB, they're on the outside. So we're going to take some tweezers and put them on the middle so that they will match the way that they looked like on the old and busted PCB. And now let's go back in, type in the secret password one more time, and we're going to type whatever this print CC thing is. And let's. Okay, I read it. Here we go. Here we go. Aha! Uh -huh. Whoa, that's too far away. Zoom in. Yeah. Okay, these all expired in the 90s, so it's not such a big deal. But look, we're printing. I can't believe it. Wow, so cool. Okay, let's print something else in high speed this time. We have finally, after what feels like several lifetimes and a legally questionable number of eBay orders, fixed the video vendor printer. We are victorious. We are kings. So naturally, we slam the control panel back on like a toddler jamming a toy into a socket and immediately sprint face first into our next hilarious technical disaster because why be happy when you can be busy? I'm just going to hit the yay button. Let's just do it now. Yay! Remember the mirrored license plates from Back to the Future 2? Well, we think the video vendor's engineers were inspired by this and that's how they came up with the idea for putting barcodes on the back of videotapes got it okay quick history lesson because you need to know this to fully appreciate how weird life is the barcode you know that thing that you mindlessly beep at self-checkout when wondering if the machine is judging you it was invented by two guys Norman Joseph Woodland and Bernard Silver and patented in 1952 just three years before the Marty McFly incident Inspired by Morse code, but like if Morse code was wearing pinstripes to a business meeting. Now, hilariously, their original barcode was circular, like a hypnotic wheel of sadness. And unsurprisingly, it took 20 years before anyone figured out how to use it without getting dizzy and falling over. Eventually, a man named George Laurer, who, by the way, looks exactly like Peter Griffin from Family Guy, and you should absolutely Google it came along and said, hey, what if it was just lines? And boom, now you can buy Cheerios at 2 a.m. without speaking to a single human. This is progress. Now let's focus and see what I'm doing here. The recreation of the mirrored barcodes that come on a VHS tape and are read in dynamically by the video vendor. It actually has a menu for testing the barcodes. So we've created a very simple barcode with no black spot. So we should get like a solid number here. We put it in, it's validating it, and come on. Oh, so it... It's interesting. It has like a spot on the bottom and three spots on the top. And I was using the little tool, so I think perhaps that tool might not be completely accurate. And by tool, I mean the little metal thing. Now look, this thing says tape top, yes. Tape wrong, no. Tape front, yes. Tape back, yes. What, what does yes and what does no mean? I don't know. All right, we're going to pull the tape back out of here, and we're just going to set it back on the shelf. Here we're going to open the display case and set it back over here. And then that'll give us some more time to investigate why the barcode did not seem to read all the way down. I'm going to cut the barcode even higher up. I'm going to do two notches and we're going to put it back into the reader and then we're going to see if it acknowledged that I exposed two more little squares here. All right, so this is looking good. And it says the same stuff that it said before. So I think all of these are good. I think these are positive values. All right, so let's go back, put the tape back in the machine very gently and gently. Just click, uh, oh, all right, there you go. All right, now let's validate and see what happens. Is it going to show some more notches? All right, let's wait a little bit here. Okay, here, here it comes. Oh, but but look on the other end. Oh, look at that. On the other end now, it's saying that that there is no spot. Uh, let's double let's double check this one more time. Let's validate. Once again, take it, took it out, put it back in, and it's now, oh, now the spot's back there. See, these lines are not... These, these don't seem to line up. I think that perhaps maybe I'm using the tool wrong. I'm not sure. Here we're going to put ET in. It has no barcode at all. 
which means it should be all open boxes, right? It shouldn't be filled boxes. So here we go. We're validating it. And yes. Yeah, 6555, five, five, whatever. So so all of our sensors appear to be working. It's just uh, I, I can't make a barcode that's lined up. Isn't that a funny kind of a funny thing? So I went and bought this better tape that's longer. I can just make anything as many, you know, in, of any distance now. And we're going to go and try to do the whole shebang uh, from top to bottom. I'm going to cut off this little part here that's the full distance. And then this guy that's the full distance. And we're going to try validating this guy. So this is like the opposite of the ET tape. Where now we have a fully mirrored uh, tape with a barcode that goes all the way. And so we should see all filled boxes. So we're going to validate. Oh, look at it. It works. Okay, I think I'm starting to figure this out, but I mean, how to make the numbers is still like a little bit tricky. I'm gonna have to do some some work there. I mean, I'm gonna have to become like a simple mind and learn things and write down math equations. Man, it's gonna be hard. You know, that's what she said. No, but seriously, folks, we're gonna figure this out, but not today. Like and subscribe. <laughs>